Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and I'm on a mission to equip you with the information you need to thrive in our data-rich world. One of the biggest challenges that anyone has in reporting any kind of data is the trade-off between simplicity and nuance. Journalists, researchers, and authors all like to report aggregate data that summarizes some kind of key idea. GDP is falling, median wealth is relatively flat, COVID-19 cases are on the rise. All of those are reports of some aggregate statistic that is pretty easy to understand. However, by keeping things that simple, by aggregating data too much, a lot of information is typically lost. So much so that the headline buries the much needed context that we all need to richly understand the world we live in. What I plan to do is show you just how important it is to unpack aggregate information and how not doing so can lead to some very questionable conclusions about critical things like racial inequality and general economic prosperity. What I hope you'll learn by the end of this video is that wherever you see some kind of aggregate data, you need to stop and ask yourself what is being hidden by rolling up so much different information. If you do that, you'll be able to much more critically assess whatever information comes your way. To make this point, I want to walk through two different examples of how when economic data are aggregated, we can miss some critical nuances. So let's start with median wealth. This is a topic I cover in more detail in a previous video that I'll link to below, so please have a look if you want a deeper intuitive understanding of what median wealth is. What I want you to focus on here is median wealth in the United States over the past 20 years or so. This chart shows how median wealth, all adjusted for inflation, has changed in those 20 years. Doing so, we see that there is a significant dip in wealth during the Great Recession and then a relatively steady climb in median wealth, though not quite reaching peak pre-recession levels. To be fair, 2020 has been a disaster for wealth, and this chart might look very different soon enough, but the best and most accurate data we have in wealth in the United States doesn't include the current year, so we'll just have to see how all that plays out after the year ends. Anyway, if this were the end of our story, and we only looked at this aggregate measure of median wealth over time, we'd probably conclude something like, economic recovery is ongoing, though median wealth really hasn't changed much over the course of the last 20 years. Again, as a quick aside, if you look at average wealth, there is a huge change, and that demonstrates the staggering amount of wealth inequality in our country. But again, that's the focus of a previous video, so I'll skip that for now. Returning to this chart, we need to ask ourselves a simple question. Is this picture of wealth over time the same for everyone, or is there something being hidden by aggregating across all people, which is what is happening in this chart? The answer, perhaps not surprising to many of you, is that there are massive differences in wealth if we split this out by wealth for white versus black Americans. When we do that, we see the striking amount of wealth inequality that exists in our country. Over the last 20 years, the median white family in the US had wealth of about $180,000, while the median black family only had about $22,000. If we simply looked at the aggregate data for US median wealth, something that is very often reported by media in describing the state of our country's economic situation, we miss a major issue. Wealth is highly concentrated in one portion of the population, white Americans. Another way to look at this is to consider the ratio of median wealth between white and black Americans. Basically, we can consider how much more wealth do white Americans have relative to black Americans, and how has that changed over time? That last piece, how it's changed over time, is really critical to help understand if this racial wealth gap is getting better or worse over time. For instance, if we saw that the ratio was shrinking, we could say that things are improving for black Americans in terms of wealth inequality. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. Back in 2001, median wealth for white Americans was about six times that of black Americans. That ballooned to nearly 11 times during the Great Recession, and is now sitting at just around eight times. In other words, racial wealth inequality has greatly increased over the last 20 years. And yet, all of that is lost if we just report the aggregate information about median wealth in the US over time. The point is that by thinking critically about what aggregation might be hiding, we can often find interesting and important nuances that we need to help us understand our world. Before we get to the next example of how aggregation can mask nuances in our economy, if you like what you're seeing, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. With that said, let's take a look at GDP growth over time. I'm certain that you've heard someone, probably a politician, talking about US GDP growth and how it is a critical measure of our economy. In short, GDP is just the total value of all the finished goods and services produced within a country in some time period. It's often thought of as a good indicator of how healthy a country's economy is, and often the obsession is with how quickly it has grown. Slow or negative growth is supposed to signal a poor economy, and fast growth is supposed to signal a strong and thriving economy. Anyway, here is a chart of annual GDP growth for the US over the past 20 years. You can see that except for the Great Recession, growth has been relatively steady around 2%. 
Some years it's a bit more, some years it's a bit less. Politicians love to pat themselves on the back when GDP growth goes up and seem to ignore it when it goes down. But as I hope you already realized from our last example, this is an aggregation that hides a lot of nuance. The US economy isn't just one big thing, but rather it's made up of many sectors like manufacturing or professional services. So when we report overall GDP growth, we hide the fact that some sectors may be booming while others are floundering. For example, take a look at mining, which contributed around $309 billion to GDP in 2019. When GDP fell 2.5% back in 2009, mining actually grew by nearly 15%. Or take a look at agriculture, which contributed about $175 billion to GDP in 2019. When GDP grew by 2.3%, the agricultural industry actually shrunk by 2.2%. The point, like with racial inequality, is that if we just look at aggregate data, or overall GDP growth, we miss that our economy is actually multifaceted. Just because GDP is going up overall doesn't mean that everyone in every industry is benefiting from that. Looking at what comprises aggregate data like GDP gives us a much richer picture of reality. These are just two examples out of countless ones I could have picked. Think how often we hear about national COVID-19 infection and mortality numbers, but then ignore the variation that exists among states. Or how an airline might report its average flight delays, but not tell you that it's delayed much more at some airports than others. Or how a school's test scores are reported to go up, but mask the fact that some grade levels are doing much better than others. There are countless such examples, and actually, I'd love to hear from you about this. What are some examples of aggregate data hiding information that you can think of? Post a comment below to share. Anyway, the point is that when we present data, there is a choice made about how to balance simplicity versus nuance. When we focus too much on aggregate data, like I showed you here, we can miss very important details about our world. Finally, if you like what you saw, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.